All right, guys, so in this video, I am going to be going through some of the Titanic movie characters from the 1997 movie, talking about whether or not they were real, if they were real, how were they portrayed in the movie as opposed to real life, kind of going through some of those factors. First one, uh, Brock Lovett. He, believe it or not, he was real. He he really was a complete, obsessed Titanic fan. I'm kidding. Uh, Brock Lovett, probably the most obvious fake character that was used to kind of facilitate the entire, uh, kickstart the entire storyline, the meeting with the older Rose, trying to find the diamond. And, you know, he's maybe you could say he's the James Cameron in this story, trying to explore the Titanic uh, back during the movie. Uh, next we have, I'm just going to run through the all the fake ones or some of the fake ones. So Rose obviously was completely fake, just used for the story storyline in the movie. She was born in 1895 and died in 1996 in her sleep while on a ship on the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, there is some debate. Maybe she was just sleeping. Maybe she died. I do believe there's a, you know, the, the, the idea is that she did die in her sleep in the same place that Jack did. And then of course you have Jack, another completely fictional character. He was born in 1892. He died in 1912 during the sinking. He succumbed to hypothermia and the coldness of the Atlantic Ocean, which was 28 degrees, actually lower than freezing, but he is completely fictional. Next, it is Calatin Hockley, kind of one of the main enemies of the movie. He is also completely fictional. He was born in 1882 and he died in 1929 by a self-inflicted gunshot wound due to the financial crash of 1929. Now we've got a real character. So Thomas Andrews, he did design the RMS Titanic. He was born in 1873 and died the night of the sinking, aged 39. So when it comes to Thomas Andrews in real life versus the movie, he was, it is true, in real life, what, the last place that they saw him alive was the first class smoking room. In the movie, it kind of depicts him like he's just gonna, I guess, die in the smoking room. I don't think that's really what happened, but they kind of showed a last scene as the ship was sinking. One of the final, like, during the music, the final sinking scenes, he was changing the clock. Uh, just kind of accepting his fate going down in the first class smoking room. So there, it is kind of realistic because he was last seen there. Uh, but in terms of his portrayal in the movie, it was definitely positive. I mean, he was seen as a good person in real life and he did go down with the ship that he helped build. And it really wasn't his fault. The Titanic was actually even more safe than the Olympic. You could say they should have had more lifeboats, but there is some debate. Andrews wanted more, but there were people that thought they didn't need the more lifeboats back in 1912. Either way, Thomas Andrews did have a pretty positive portrayal in the movie. He also told Rose that the ship was going to sink when they were on the Grand Staircase right after it hit the iceberg. You know, there he was in a lot of scenes earlier in the movie, kind of showing the Titanic, the ship, because Cameron wanted to show it off. He was at the Palm Court, like, during a brunch. He was taking them around the gymnasium. There was a deleted scene where they were in the gym with him, uh, just kind of, like, touring the ship, because I'm sure... James Cameron wanted to show off like all the rooms they had built and, and just kind of give a history lesson on the Titanic because it is so interesting. Uh, the next person, it is Lovejoy. So this, this is the, the modern, this is Jason Bourne. That's who that, that's who. Now Lovejoy was uh, not real. He was just, you know, Cal's, I guess, literal manservant. Everyone needs a Lovejoy. Imagine having someone, a trained dude like that, that would just be at your side and he's your servant, but he's like a trained professional. That'd be pretty sweet. Uh, but he ended up dying during the sinking. Some people were confused. Why did he have the big cut on his face as the ship? I mean, listen, you want to talk about bad luck for Lovejoy? The dude is clinging to the side of the ship. It's going up at an angle and it literally breaks right where he is. I mean, you can't make it up. It is very, very unlucky. Uh, but the thought is that he probably just fell into the hole because it, it broke right where he was, where he was standing. You could see the, the rail just snap. So he probably died by falling through the hole or something in the ship as it's breaking. Uh, and, and then the other thing, people are like, why did he have it, the big cut on his face? Honestly, like the first few times watching Titanic, I just kind of figured... 
I mean, the dude is fighting for his life. You know, you, he could probably just bang into something. That's why he had the cut on his face. But there was a prolonged deleted scene of him going full Jason Bourne, fighting Jack in the first class dining room as the ship is sinking. And they decided to cut it out. And they should have cut it out because it was a ridiculously long scene. Uh, the next person, it is Fabrizio, who had a bunch of his scenes removed, actually, including an entire third-class little love story that was removed. Uh, but he is a fictional character, of course, born sometime in the 1890s and died the night of the sinking. The dude got crushed by a funnel. You want to talk about bad luck. Interesting alternative death on Fabrizio. In the original script, he wasn't killed by this falling smokestack, managing to avoid it at the last second. But after the ship sank, he tried to board a lifeboat, but Cal beat him in the head with an oar, cutting open his scalp. Uh, is this even real? This seems a little bit uh, dark here. Yeah, so they decided to cut that out. Uh, that makes sense. I, I don't think that would really fit, even though Cal is supposed to be an evil character, an antagonist. It, it just doesn't make sense to have that much of a graphic scene in a movie like Titanic. They're saying that after the entire ship sunk, that Cal's lifeboat, I guess, was getting swarmed after it sunk, and he beat Fabrizio to death. Oh my goodness, imagine if that would have happened. Yeah, that scene wasn't even filmed, I don't believe. No, there's no way it was filmed because it's not in any of the deleted scenes. The next character is Benjamin Gutenheim, and, and this is a real character. He does have a very famous scene in this movie towards the end. He was very wealthy. This was someone in real life, uh, and he just accepts his fate on the first class grand staircase, says that he's going down as a gentleman. It is commendable, but yes, he was real, and, and he did die on the night of the sinking, even with all the wealth that he had. Next is Edward Smith, so obviously another real character in real life. I would say this is the one of the characters that had a negative portrayal in the movie. Once Thomas Andrews told him the ship was going to sink, he kind of just completely shut down in the movie, and that is not what happened in real life at all uh, in terms of him helping with the lifeboats. There was a deleted scene where he was calling a lifeboat back that only had like 16 people in it. I think it was Molly Brown's lifeboat, but they decided to keep that deleted. I'm guessing the reason Cameron had him portrayed the way he did to where he was basically shell-shocked after Andrew said the ship was going to sink for certain in like two hours, probably to try and get it into the mind of the viewer that it's a hopeless situation and a lot of people are going to die. That would be my speculation, but... Uh, that is not what happened in real life. He did go down with the ship, yes, but he was more helpful. He didn't turn into this shell-shocked person once he realized the ship was going to sink because it also signified a death sentence for him. He knows that there aren't enough lifeboats. He knows that more than half at least of the people are going to die. And if you're the captain, especially in 1912, you need to go down with your ship. So it was a death sentence for him. The next one is Bruce Ismay. So Bruce Ismay was a real character. He served as the managing director of the White Star Line, born in 1862, dying in 1937. He did get on uh, one of the final lifeboats. I would say he definitely had a negative portrayal in the movie. Now the conversation early in the movie in the first class reception room about him trying to push the ship faster. Apparently that conversation did happen. Uh, and then it kind of shows him towards the end of the sinking, almost kind of like a coward, getting into the boat right at the end, hoping that Murdoch doesn't see him. When in reality, you know, they had a cutout scene with Isame that I thought was really good. And it was so small. It was a deleted scene where he was panicking. And it, it kind of humbled him. The officer yelled at him and he kind of, you know, it humbled him. It was a really good scene. I don't know why they would cut that out. I'm guessing it depicted Isame on too good of a note, but he was definitely, I, I would say, not as bad as the movie makes him out to be. He kind of got a bad shake. He was helping a lot of people, and he only really got into a boat, you know, when there was no one else there. And I guess the movie does depict that, but it makes him seem like he's a little coward, you know, 
bunny hopping into the boat like a little rabbit or something. Kind of a weird thing there. Uh, the next one is William Murdoch. So yes, he was real. Yes, he did die the night of the sinking. Uh, and there is a lot of, you know, I think they portrayed Murdoch very in a positive light. He did his job. You know, Kale tried to bribe him. He didn't take his money. That was a better scene for him. I'm sure that made people watching the movie like him more. And then he had the issue where he shoots someone and then he ends up ending it, you know, right before the sinking. Probably a better way to go out. Well, actually, definitely a better way to go out than drowning or freezing to death in the Atlantic, to be completely honest. But there were people that were related to Murdoch that really don't like how he was portrayed. But genuinely, I think he was portrayed pretty good in the movie, even with his, you know, ending death uh, in terms of that. So, guys, those are just some different characters. Were they real? Were they not? Were they portrayed well or not? in terms of the Titanic movie, but that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you follow me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description.